Night of the Werewolf. Chapter 1. The Siege of Brasov. The Alpha, Dmitri, stood outside the towering walls of the 17th century city of Brasov. Nestled in the Carpathian Mountains, the city was a bustling hub of trade and culture. Its inhabitants, blissfully unaware of the lycanthropic menace, lurking just beyond their gates. The full moon cast an eerie glow over the landscape, highlighting Dimitri's massive form and the army of werewolves that stood behind him, their eyes gleaming with anticipation. Inside Brasov, the townsfolk went about their daily duties, oblivious to the impending doom. Merchants bartered in the marketplace, children played in the cobblestone streets, and the scent of fresh bread wafted from the bakeries. The city was alive with the hum of activity, a stark contrast to the silence and tension outside its walls. Dimitri raised his clawed hand, signalling his pack. With a guttural growl, he commanded the werewolves to attack. They surged forward as one a terrifying tide of fur and fangs. The gates of Brasov, strong and fortified, stood no chance against their relentless onslaught. The wolves breached the defences with ease, pouring into the city like a flood of death. The peaceful streets of Brasov erupted into chaos. The werewolves tore through the populace, their primal rage driving them to slaughter anyone in their path. Screams of terror filled the air as men, women and children fell before the oncoming horde. Dimitri moved with deadly precision, his claws and teeth cutting down all who dared stand against him. Those who were bitten by the werewolves soon joined the carnage, their bodies convulsing and transforming into beasts. Dimitri's ranks swelled with each new transformation, his army growing stronger with every bite. The newly turned werewolves, driven by the same insatiable hunger for destruction, turned on their former friends and family, furthering the devastation. For hours the bloodbath continued, buildings were set ablaze, and the once vibrant city was reduced to ruins. The marketplace, once filled with laughter and commerce, became a battlefield of death and despair. The churches, which had stood as sanctuaries of hope, were now tombs of the fallen. Dimitri, the Alpha, surveyed the destruction with a cold, unyielding gaze. His vengeance had transformed Brasov into a graveyard. The city's defenders lay dead, its walls breached, and its citizens either slaughtered or turned into werewolves. The conquest was complete. As the first light of dawn approached, Dmitri stood amidst the ruins of Brasov, his army of werewolves surrounding him. The night of terror had ended, but the reign of the Alpha was far from over. The once great city was now a testament to his power and the unrelenting fury of his pack. The chapter ended with Dmitri, the Alpha, and his ever-growing legion of werewolves poised for their next move. The world had changed, and the beast within Dimitri knew no bounds. The night of the werewolf had only just begun, and humanity's darkest fears were about to become a reality. The Call to Arms In the heart of Central Europe, Nestled along the Danube River lay the grand city of Vienna. It was the largest and most influential city near the Carpathian Mountains, a beacon of culture and power in the region. Ruling over Vienna was Archduke Leopold Graham, a man known for his wisdom, strength and unwavering sense of justice. As the most powerful ruler in Central Europe, his influence stretched far and wide Word of the Lycan curse and the fall of Brasov reached Archduke Graham swiftly. Refugees poured into Vienna, seeking safety under his rule. Despite the chaos, Graham remained composed. He was a kind ruler, but stern in his governance. He accepted the refugees, offering them sanctuary, but immediately put them to work rebuilding and fortifying the city. In the Grand Council Chamber, Graham convened a meeting 
with his trusted advisors, military leaders, and survivors from the afflicted regions. The room was filled with a palpable tension as they discussed the growing threat of the werewolves. These creatures are unlike any enemy we have faced before, began General von Richter, a seasoned warrior. They are relentless and unstoppable. Every person they bite becomes one of them. A survivor, his face gaunt and eyes haunted, spoke up. I barely escaped Brassoff with my life. They tore through the city like a force of nature. There was nothing we could do. Graham listened intently, his face grave. Is there no way to defeat them? He asked, his voice calm, but edged with concern. An older advisor, Albrecht, shook his head. We have tried conventional weapons. They are ineffective. A curse spreads with each bite, turning our own people against us. It is a plague unlike any other. Silence fell over the room as the gravity of the situation settled upon them. Graham's mind raced with possibilities. He was a ruler who believed in facing challenges head on, but this threat was unlike any he had encountered. Archduke, spoke up Lady Helena, a scholar well versed in ancient lore. There may be legends and old knowledge that speak of ways to combat such creatures. Perhaps in the ancient texts and forgotten histories, we can find a clue. Graham nodded thoughtfully. Then we must leave no stone unturned. Search the archives, consult the oldest scholars, and gather any information that may help us. We will not sit idly by while our people are slaughtered. As the council dispersed to carry out his orders, Graham remained seated, deep in thought. The lichen threat was more than just a physical danger. It was a test of his leadership and resolve. He knew that the fate of not just Vienna, but potentially all of Central Europe, rested on his shoulders. The refugees continued to stream into the city, and Graham ensured that their needs were met while maintaining order and security. He could see the fear in their eyes, and it strengthened his determination to protect his people. That evening, Graham stood on the balcony of his palace, overlooking the bustling city below. The weight of responsibility pressed heavily on him, but he was resolute. He would find a way to defeat the Lycans, no matter the cost. In the distance, the Carpathian Mountains loomed, a silent reminder of the darkness that had been unleashed. Graham knew that time was of the essence, and every moment spent was a step closer to the inevitable confrontation with the Alpha and his pack. As Archduke Graham pondered his next move, his mind a whirlwind of strategies and possibilities, the battle against the Lycan curse had begun and he was determined to lead his people through the storm that lay ahead. The fall of hope. The news was grim. Villages, towns and cities across the Carpathian region were falling one by one to the Alpha and his werewolf army. The peaceful hamlets were the first to be consumed, their residents turning into feral beasts under the relentless onslaught larger towns, thinking their fortified walls would protect them, quickly realized their folly as the werewolves breached their defenses with terrifying ease. The once thriving marketplaces and bustling streets became graveyards littered with the remnants of human civilization. In the city of Vienna, the atmosphere was tense and filled with dread. Word had spread that the Alpha was making his way towards them, leaving a trail of devastation in his wake. The people of Vienna worked tirelessly, building barricades and arming themselves, but the sense of hopelessness was palpable. Fear was etched into every face, and whispers of doom permeated the air. They're unstoppable, a blacksmith muttered as he hammered out makeshift weapons. What chance do we have against those monsters? We're all going to die, a woman whispered to her friend as they reinforced the barricades. They say the werewolves can't be killed. 
The children clung to their mothers, eyes wide with terror, sensing the fear of the adults. The city was a cauldron of despair, and even the bravest hearts were gripped by the certainty of their fate. In the midst of this chaos, Archduke Leopold Graham remained steadfast. He knew that surrendering to fear would only hasten their demise. He convened a council with his most trusted advisers and the refugees who had seen the horror firsthand. We must find a way to fight back, Graham said, his voice resolute. We cannot succumb to despair. Lady Helena, the scholar who had been tirelessly researching ancient texts, spoke up. There is a place, once called the Dark Lands, where the lichens were said to dwell. It is far beyond the Carpathian Mountains. Travelling there would take weeks, if not months, on horseback. Graham's brow furrowed. We don't have that kind of time. Helena nodded, her expression serious. I know, but I found something else. An old scroll with strange markings. It mentions a deity, Lysana, the god of the lichen. These symbols, I believe we can recreate them and try something. I know not what, but it's something. She unrolled the ancient parchment, revealing intricate symbols and glyphs that seemed to pulse with a forgotten power. These symbols might hold the key. If we can invoke Lysanor, perhaps we can find a way to counter the Alpha and his curse. Graham studied the scroll, the weight of their last hope resting on the fragile paper. He looked up at Helena his eyes filled with determination. I would rather try something than fall to my knees and give up. The people of Vienna, though afraid, watched as their leaders worked with a sense of purpose. The scroll was carefully studied and a ritual was planned. Symbols were painstakingly recreated and preparations were made to invoke the ancient deity. As the night approached, the feeling of helplessness began to shift. It was not replaced with certainty or confidence, but with a flicker of hope. Graham's resolve inspired those around him, and even in the face of almost certain doom, they found the strength to carry on. The chapter ended with Vienna on the brink of attack, the Alpha and his werewolves drawing ever closer. The people braced for the inevitable, their fate resting in the hands of their determined leader and the ancient symbols that might just hold the key to their survival. The ritual of desperation, the Alpha and his relentless army stood at the outskirts of Vienna. Fires blazed and the air was thick with smoke and the scent of blood. The once thriving outskirts were now a battlefield as the werewolves tore through anything and anyone in their path, an unstoppable force of primal fury. From his balcony, Archduke Leopold Graham could see the fires and hear the distant, agonizing screams of his people. His heart pounded with urgency. Whatever this ritual is, we need to do it now, he commanded, his voice echoing through the halls of his stronghold. Inside the main chamber, Lady Helena worked feverishly, putting the final touches on the ancient symbols and preparing for the invocation of Lysanor. Her hands trembled with both fear and determination as she arranged the relics and chanted the incantations. The scroll lay open before her, its symbols glowing faintly in the dim light. Outside, the Lycan army marched through the streets of Vienna, an unstoppable wave of terror the Alpha, Dimitri, led them with an iron will, his power growing with each new werewolf that joined his ranks. The primal rage within him surged, fueled by the strength of his pack. The city's defenses crumbled. People fled in terror, only to be caught and turned by the advancing werewolves. The power of the pack enhanced Dimitri's rage, making him more formidable with every passing moment. Graham could see the Lycan army at the gates of his stronghold. Hurry, Helena, he screamed, his voice filled with desperation. Helena 
mumbled the final words of the ritual, her voice barely audible over the chaos outside. She closed her eyes, focusing all her energy on the invocation. Moments passed, each one feeling like an eternity, but nothing seemed to happen. Graham looked at her, his expression a mix of hope and despair. Well, we never gave up. We'd go out trying. The sounds of battle grew closer. They could hear the guards being slaughtered just outside the chamber. The doors shook with the force of the werewolves' attacks, the wood splintering and cracking under the assault. Graham drew his sword, standing tall and ready to defend his people to the last breath. Helena, tears streaming down her face, stood beside him, clutching the scroll. The final scene was one of impending doom. The gates of the stronghold began to buckle under the pressure, and the roar of the Alpha's army grew louder, an unrelenting storm of primal rage. The chapter ended with Graham and Helena standing side by side, prepared to face their fate. The sense of impending doom hung heavy in the air, as the might of the Alpha and his werewolf army bore down upon them, and the last hope of Vienna seemed to flicker and fade in the encroaching darkness. The bargain with Lysenor. As the doors buckled and shattered under the immense power of the werewolves, time seemed to slow. The savage howls of the werewolves faded and the bloodlust in their eyes dimmed. Everything around Archduke Leopold Graham froze in place. The werewolves stood motionless, their claws suspended mid-air. Helena, still clutching the ancient scroll, remained as still as a statue. Graham looked around, bewildered by the sudden stillness. His grip on his sword tightened. What sorcery is this? he muttered. From the shadows, a strange figure emerged, half man, half beast. The figure exuded an otherworldly presence, its eyes glowing with an ancient wisdom. Graham raised his sword defensively. Are you the Alpha? The figure shook its head. No, I am Lysenor. I use this form as your mortal mind would not be able to handle my true essence. Lysanor's voice echoed through the chamber, calm and powerful. Come, we shall return here shortly. In an instant, Graham found himself transported to a distant past. Before him stretched a battlefield where a silver-clad army marched through the dark lands, slaughtering the lichens with ruthless efficiency. The air was thick with the scent of blood and the cries of the dying. Lysanor stood beside Graham, surveying the scene. This is where it began, all those years ago, with King Cedric. He was a ruler, like you, driven by the desire to save his people at any cost. Graham watched as the scene unfolded. He saw Cedric, a fierce warrior, leading his army against the Lycans. The battle was brutal, and the Lycans were decimated. King Cedric, Lesnar continued, in his desperation, offered me anything to save his people. And so, the curse you see before you is his anything. The curse of the Lycan began with his pact. Graham turned to Lysenor, his eyes filled with a mix of awe and horror. What would you have me do to save my people? Lysenor's gaze bore into Graham's soul. Tell me, Graham, what would you give to save your people? Graham's voice was steady. Anything. I would give my life, my power. Lysanor's laugh was deep and resonant. What is a life? Many thousands of lives have already been taken. Do you think, because you are a ruler, yours is worth more than anyone else's? It is not. And what power do you have to give when your cities have been conquered? Graham's resolve did not waver. I'll give my soul. Lysanor shook his head, a wry smile playing on his lips. Now then, let's not have any of that. Everyone's first offer is always their soul. It's such a cheap thing. I'll give my soul for wealth, for power, for love. What if I were to ask you to keep your soul forever? 
Graham's brow furrowed. I do not understand. Of course you do not, Lessonor replied. You are but a human, a mortal, but the deal is simple. In exchange for the safety of your people, you will keep your soul bound to this earth, bound to me. You will become part of the very curse you seek to end. Graham hesitated, the weight of the decision pressing down on him. We have a deal then. Lissanor's eyes gleamed with a knowing light. Yes, said Graham, his voice firm despite the uncertainty in his heart. The chapter ended with the sense of impending doom and the weight of Lissanor's bargain hanging heavily in the air. The fate of Vienna and perhaps the world now hinged on the cryptic terms of a deal with an ancient deity. The true cost of Graham's sacrifice remained shrouded in mystery, leaving an unsettling uncertainty about what lay ahead. The end of carnage. In the blink of an eye, Graham was back at his stronghold. The werewolves, his friends, and even Lady Helena were still frozen in time. Lysenor stood before him, his otherworldly presence cast in a surreal glow over the room. Lysanano's voice broke the silence. Now, before we finish the details of this deal, let me end this carnage. With a wave of Lysanno's hand, time resumed. The werewolves and everyone else unfroze. The battle cries and sounds of destruction returning momentarily before Graham could react. He raised his sword, prepared to defend against the werewolves. But to his astonishment, the werewolves stopped their attack. They turned and began to walk away, still in their wolf form. Hundreds, thousands of werewolves marched westward, heading towards an unknown destination. Graham watched in disbelief. Where are they going? He asked, his voice filled with cautious hope. Home, Lissano replied simply. The god of the lichen watched the retreating werewolves with a somber expression. Now before we seal this bargain, there is one more I need to speak with. He may well save you or condemn you. Let's find out. With that, Lysanor vanished, leaving Graham standing amidst the confusion. Helena raced to Graham, her eyes wide with relief and disbelief. You did it. You saved us. Graham smiled faintly, but his mind was heavy with the knowledge that more was yet to come. The werewolves retreat had given them a reprieve, but the true cost of the bargain was still unknown. As the villagers and soldiers slowly emerged from their hiding places, unsure of what had transpired, Graham could feel the weight of his decision pressing down on him. He had bought them time, but at what price? The chapter ended with Graham standing amidst the aftermath, his heart filled with a mix of relief and foreboding. The promise of Lisano's bargain lingered in the air, a dark cloud over their temporary peace. Graham knew that his journey was far from over, and the true test of his leadership and sacrifice was yet to be revealed. The Alpha's choice. The Alpha roared in anger as his pack no longer followed his commands. The werewolves marched out of the city, heading towards the dark lands. Dimitri's fury was palpable, his eyes burning with uncontained rage. In a flash, Lysanor appeared before him, exuding calm amidst the chaos. Come, my child, it is time for you to decide, Lysanor said, his voice filled with both authority and sadness. In the blink of an eye, Lysanor and Dimitri stood at the ruins of Dimitri's childhood home. The familiar surroundings were now nothing more than a shell of their former selves. Dimitri looked down, realizing he was in his human form once more. My son, Lysanor began, you have known much sorrow. I beg you to come home to me. Join your pack in the Darklands. Complete the cycle. Become one with my pack. If you stay here in this world, there is nothing but pain and suffering for you. You are the Alpha, the primal force that cannot die. 
you will live a long, painful life of suffering and regret until those born of death shall give you peace. Dimitri's eyes flashed with defiance. They took everything from me, he spat. They took my parents for no reason other than ignorance. They killed my Elena for no reason other than lust. How many more will they kill? No, I will not know peace. I will die from those born of death. Lisanor's face fell into a deep sadness. As you wish, my child. I feel I have failed you. Even with all my power, I cannot stop your suffering. Though I am known as a god, today I feel as feeble as an ant. I shall mourn for many years because of this. Dimitri stood silently, his heart a cauldron of pain and vengeance. But I do wish you well, my son. Lisano continued, a faint glimmer of hope in his voice. And though you are destined to die, I see fragments of an alternative where you are happy with an offspring. The words hung in the air, filled with a possibility Dimitri had never considered. The idea of a future, of a lineage, seemed impossible amidst his wrath and sorrow. I cannot see that future, Dimitri replied, his voice breaking. Perhaps not now, Lisano said gently, but know that the possibility exists. It is a choice you may yet make in time. With that, Lysanor vanished, leaving Dimitri alone in the ruins of his past. The silence was deafening, the weight of his decision settling heavily upon him. The path ahead was shrouded in darkness and uncertainty, but Dimitri knew one thing. His vengeance was not yet complete. The chapter ended with Dimitri standing amidst the remnants of his childhood home the echoes of Lysanor's words resonating within him. The choice between a life of endless suffering and the faint glimmer of a different future lay before him, waiting for his next move. The Alpha's journey was far from over, and the world would soon feel the full force of his unrelenting wrath. The Eternal Guardian Graham was whisked away from his stronghold, transported to an unknown piece of land. Before him stood a small, unassuming house, surrounded by dense woods. He stood alone, confusion and unease gripping him. Moments later, Lisanor appeared, his presence both comforting and ominous. I had hoped to save you from this, Lysanor began, his voice tinged with regret. But a deal is a deal. Graham listened intently, his heart heavy with anticipation. From this day on, you shall be the keeper, Lysanor continued. Your sons and daughters will be the keepers. The lineage of your family will keep watch over the beast. You shall never be allowed to leave this place. Others will come so you may continue your lineage. This will be for many years. Your pact to keep your soul means that you and your descendants will never leave this place. You shall be the eternal guardian to keep the beast in check. The beast cannot be killed, for how do you kill primal nature? One day, many years from today, you will have paid your bargain, and you and your line will be free. But until this time, you must stay forever watchful, forever vigilant, for if the beast ever escapes, nothing will stop him. Graham's mind raced, trying to comprehend the magnitude of his new reality. The weight of eternal guardianship settled heavily upon his shoulders. Suddenly, a mighty roar echoed from the cellar beneath the house. Graham's heart pounded as he descended the stairs, the sound growing louder and more ferocious. He reached a reinforced door, thick and unyielding, and peered through a small barred window. Inside the Alpha, Dimitri stood in his werewolf form. His eyes burned with unquenchable rage, his body tense with primal energy. Dimitri's fury was palpable, a force of nature confined within the stone walls of the cellar. Graham felt a mixture of pity and resolve. He understood the necessity of his role, the importance of his lineage in keeping the world safe 
from Mitri's unrestrained wrath. The words of Lysanor echoed in his mind, forever watchful, forever vigilant. The thought of never leaving this place, of his descendants bearing the same burden, filled Graham with a sense of sorrow, yet he knew it was the price he had agreed to pay. As he turned to leave the cellar, he heard Dimitri's growl soften, a flicker of humanity glinting in his eyes for just a moment. Graham wondered if, in some distant reality, there might be a chance for Dimitri to find peace, to escape the cycle of rage and vengeance. Graham ascended the stairs, his mind set on the long road ahead. He stepped out into the small house, taking in the surroundings that would now be his eternal prison and his charge. The roar of the Alpha faded into the background, replaced by the solemn duty that lay before him. The chapter ended with Graham standing in the doorway of the house, the weight of his new role pressing down on him. He was now the guardian, the keeper of the beast. The future of his lineage was bound to this place, forever linked to the primal force contained below. The journey of the Alpha and the lineage of Graham had intertwined, setting the stage for an eternal struggle between vigilance and primal fury. The Eternal Vigil. Years passed, and Archduke Leopold Graham was long dead. His lineage took over the charge of the Keepers, and their name became synonymous with their sacred duty, the Graham family. The land where the house stood became almost invisible to the outside world, shrouded in secrecy and protected by ancient wards. Few dared to disturb the Graham family, for their purpose was both revered and feared. Generations came and went, each Graham carrying the heavy burden of their ancestors packed with Lysanor. The family home, now an imposing yet hidden mansion, stood as a silent sentinel over the beast confined in the cellar. Every few years, a lone wanderer, guided by destiny or the will of Lysanor, would arrive to join the family and continue the lineage. These followers of Lysanor ensured that the bloodline remained unbroken and the duty unfulfilled. Many more years passed and the world outside changed dramatically. The mansion, however, remained untouched by time, a relic of a bygone era, almost forgotten by the outside world. One stormy night in the present day, a man named Tom found himself seeking shelter. The rain poured relentlessly and the wind howled like a mournful spirit. Shivering and soaked to the bone, Tom trudged through the dark woods until he came upon the old mansion. Its silhouette loomed ominously against the lightning-lit sky. Desperate for refuge, Tom walked up to the massive wooden door and knocked. The sound echoed eerily, mingling with the roar of the storm. He waited, hoping for a kind soul to offer him shelter from the unforgiving elements. The door creaked open slightly, casting a sliver of warm light into the cold, wet darkness outside. Tom peered inside, wondering who or what awaited him beyond the threshold. Would he find solace and a place to rest, or would he uncover the secrets and burdens of the Graham family, the legacy of the Alpha, the curse of the Lycan, and the eternal guardianship of the Graham family were stories waiting to be told. The chapter ended with Tom standing at the doorway, the possibilities of his fate hanging in the balance. His encounter with the Graham family and the hidden truths of their lineage would unfold in the Crimson Dawn series, available exclusively at Professor Shadow. The saga of the Alpha, the Keepers and the Beast would continue, weaving a tale of duty, destiny and the primal forces that shape the world. The End Thank you to all members of this channel. This would not be possible without your support. Original story written by Professor Shadow. Narrated by Professor Shadow. Copyright 2024 Professor Shadow.